Uh, that what a background like hers means is infinite amounts of pain, right? Infinite amounts of pain and brokenness and being hurt. Um, and yet somehow people, we, choose a life of selfish and self-gratification and, and using others for our own gratification and all of that kind of thing. Um, and we don't realize that it's just making us more and more miserable. Well, so finally, what happened in the story? Mary was going on her uh, merry way, you know, uh, with uh, drawing every 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 young guy that she could she could find into sin. Until she tried to get into the Church of the Holy Sepulchre to see the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, to go to the uh, to the feast of the exaltation of the cross. And the church wouldn't let her in. It's not that the parish council wouldn't let her in. It's not like the starosta wouldn't let her in. The very temple itself would not permit her to cross the threshold. And at first she had no clue. Because all she thought about was herself. All she thought about was I want to do this, this is my will, why can't I do what I want to do? And how often do we get to a point where we're thinking, well, I want to do what I want to do, and why is, why is everything not cooperating with me? You see, self-denial is not just about denying ourselves our sins. Self-denial is about denying ourselves our will our selfish will. And so Mary came to the threshold of the church and then and she got tired of trying to go in and it, it, like running into a solid glass door. So she went over to the corner of the courtyard and there was an icon of the Mother of God and it began to dawn on her why the church would not let her in. Because she was not approaching in a spirit of repentance, but because she had she had defiled her life. She had wasted her life. And she began to repent. She looked at the icon of the Mother of God. She, uh, she began to pray to the Mother of God. She began to repent of her sins. And, uh, and, and she vowed to lead a new life and to put away her sin. And, and indeed, instead of, the church, the, instead of an invisible force at the door of the church blocking her, it's like she was drawn into the church where she could venerate the life-giving cross of our Lord. Now what is this? This is, a process. this is that process of what happens when we have a spiritual awakening. When we realize that um, the world is a lot more than just the gratification of our senses. When we realize that the world has a lot more to it than just the building up of our own ego and the gratification of our own will. And we realize that the spiritual world and, and that God is the criterion of everything. We have another example, if you remember back in the prodigal son. It says in a, a point in, in the story that he came to himself. Just like Mary, before the icon of the mother of God, she came to herself. And realized her sin, and, and turned away from it, renounced it and strove, strove, well, vowed essentially from that time forward to live a different life, to embrace that path of repentance. 
this path of, of, of spiritual awakening, the spiritual awakening usually comes totally outside of a religious context for so many of us. You know? um, I would bet most of us in here became Christians or at least became spiritually aware before we'd ever heard of the Orthodox Church, right? And that, we start wherever we start. God touches us wherever he decides to touch us. And whenever, at, in his time, not ours. And so, with the spiritual awakening, then our life begins to change. No longer are we operating in a two-dimensional world of, of the things that we can see, taste, touch, smell, hear, and control. But rather, we enter into, into consciousness of another dimension of reality, the divine dimension. And that God is there, and that he calls us to himself, and that he loves us, and he, and he wants to heal us. And so, in this process of repentance, which begins the mo that moment of spiritual awakening, and then moves onward, we have the real essence of what repentance means. The word repentance does not mean simply to feel sorry for your sins. If you look at the story of St. Mary of Egypt, it's not just that she felt sorry for her sins. She did, certainly. But that, wasn't, that, was, that was only a beginning. Because very often feeling sorry for your sins can really mean feeling sorry for yourself. Oh, I've messed up my life. Oh, I've done this all. Well, it may sound pious sometimes. But it, it can be just as selfish and self-centered as I want what I want. <laughs> Repentance means transformation of our mind, of our noose, of our consciousness. Now that transformation of our consciousness begins the moment that that spiritual dimension is opened, right? The moment that we come to ourself and that whole other dimension, that divine dimension, opens up to us. And that, and that, that transformation of consciousness also is something that takes time. And the fathers talk about uh, three stages. You know, we're into Europeans, so everything is in threes, right? Um, three stages. Purification, illumination, deification. Actually, it's all the process of deification, because that is what salvation is. Salvation is not about going to heaven. Salvation is learning learning how to live in heaven now, here, in this world. Our salvation is about this world, not the next. And this is very important, especially because we come from Western, so many of us come from Western Christianity where it's all about going to heaven. It's good to go to heaven. We want to go to heaven. But we'll only go to heaven, ultimately, if we go to heaven now. And that's the whole process of repentance. And that repentance is this gradual transformation of our mind and of our heart as we begin to see more and more and more of how the spiritual world, of how, of how the reality of God permeates every aspect of life and every aspect of reality. And how that presence of God, that, that radiant pole of God's, of, of God's presence, illumines us to be able to repent of our sins, to turn away from our sins. It reveals to us what our sins are, so that we can, so that we can transcend them. 
And that is the process. You look at the life of St. Mary. She, uh, she said she suffered 17 years in battling thoughts. All the memories, all, the, all of the uh, self-indulgence, all of the you know, worldly, wor worldly pleasures that she had in, engaged in and indulged in. All those memories were deep inside her. And she knew that, that to focus on these was sin. And so it took 17 years for her to learn how, through most bitter asceticism, to overcome those thoughts. How many of us have struggled 17 years in, in a soul, you know, single-mindedly to overcome our thoughts? How many ascetics in the whole history of Christianity? But this, but so this ascetic feat of Saint Mary of Egypt is held up for us, and in the church holds her up as the greatest of all ascetics. The greatest, the, uh, and greater than, greater than any of the men, than, greater than, than all the monks, it was this woman, this woman who had been a harlot, who transformed her life by repentance. And not only did she learn how to cleanse her, her mind and her heart of, of these sinful thoughts, but she, more than that, was transfigured, illumined first and then transfigured by the grace of God. And what is that illumination? It's, 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 it's our very mind, our heart, our soul and body, having been purified of all the things which, uh, which are obstacles that we hold up to God working within us, having renounced and detached all of and detached from all of those, she let the work, the grace of God work in her, so that by the end of her life she was clairvoyant, praying in the air, and would pray in the air, rising up from the earth. And could walk on water and live without food. This utterly, utterly remarkable ascetic who illustrates for us what repentance, what the ultimate fruit of repentance can be. Not that we're going to emulate her life, most likely we're not. But there are aspects of it which can absolutely inspire us to know that no matter how much of a mess we've made of our life, we too can be saved. We too can become a saint. We too can be deified. We too can be transfigured. We too can, can become like Christ as he promised to us. So let us... Think about the life of St. Mary of Egypt and how she illustrates the path of salvation for us, that we too might tread that same path, that we too might open our, open our minds and our hearts and let go of all of those obstacles to God working within us and accept the, the gift of God's grace within us so that he might heal and transform and transfigure our souls.